Released in 1985 and 1986, these two films, written and directed by Savage Steve Holland, both star John Cusack. And some say one is the unofficial sequel to the other. For the first time on You've Never Seen It, we're discussing two films at once, Better Off Dead and One Crazy Summer. Welcome to You've Never Seen It, an audio podcast where I'm on a mission to never hear these four words again. I am your host, Allison Salamone, and joining me today are returning guests and two of my favorite humans on this planet, Moose Haas and Brother Lomas. What's going on, guys? Just here to talk about teen suicide and the most hilarious manageable possible. <laughs> I'll try to come in a little more positive and just say, hey, it's great to be back. <laughs> Two of my favorite people. I've had a really, really rough day, but I'm insanely excited to hang out with you, Allison, and, and you, Brother Lomas. And once again, talk a movie that Brother Lomas and I are absolutely thrilled about. I'd even say two movies that we're absolutely thrilled about today. First time we've done this on You've Never Seen It. We're doing multiple movies in one episode. So this is a bit of a free-for-all. Who knows what's going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just, just like I didn't know what was going to happen when I got into these movies. But even before we get started, I'm just now going to say that You've Never Seen It is officially a 1980s John Cusack stan account because I'm pretty sure... And I told you both this, but I'm pretty sure I now have a major crush on 80s Cusack. Like, that is a handsome man. In, like, an unconventional handsome, like, that is a handsome dude. And I'm I'm living for it. I think he, I think he held up all the way into the 90s. He was a good-looking dude all the way up until the late 90s. He aged well for a while. He sure did. Yeah, young Cusack's a hottie. That's for sure. Oh. I'll definitely admit to that man crush right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we got that out of the way and we've all admitted to it. This works. This is going to work out so well. Um, so, I mean, first and foremost, we just got, I think we just kind of get straight into Better Off Dead. This movie came up because after we had recorded The Burbs, we were all kind of hanging and talking. And I don't remember which one of you brought up Better Off Dead, but it's been kind of hanging in the background now of like, the, if you want to talk Better Off Dead, we're here for it. So... I got to know why. What is it about this movie? Well, Ben, to me, why don't you go first, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember when I started watching Better Off Dead. I know I've been watching it probably yearly since I was a young child. I think uh, I used to rent it like every week from the local like home video store. And I think a lot of it is the younger brother, Badger, like that was my idol as like as like a 10 year old that's who you wanted to be you wanted to be a a 10 year old that was smarter than all the adults that was just blowing stuff up and doing illegal things and that was always just a very special character to me i idolized him <laughs> as a young child and it's one of those movies a lot like the birds that every time you watch it you get something new and the singer at the high school dance yeah. was one of my first ever crushes as a child. E.G. Daly. I just found out that apparently this is the voice of a rug rat. And so yeah, now Tommy I have like really weird feelings about it. She's also the girl. She's also, um, what's her face? Uh, Pee Wee Herman's girlfriend in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So many different threads are being tied to like my, <laughs> my childhood crushes right now. You bring up Badger, and I love how like he's always doing the most random and insane stuff. Like he gets a book for the mailman on how to pick up trashy women, and then the next time yes. Lane goes into his room, he's in there with a bunch of women, and he just smiles. And Lane's like, "Okay." And they, every single time something happens, they walk in, they see it, and they just close the door and walk away. Like it's fine. 
Badger's the best. The, like post, I guess you'd call it a post credit scene yeah. where he's completed the rocket <laughs> and he just flies out of the garage. Yeah, it's Badger's the best. I love that. Badger is incredible. That's awesome. So, what is it about this movie for you, Moose? I was shown this movie for the first time when I was a kid at a church function. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. Uh, My first experience with Better Off Dead was at like, it was like a pre-teens like night on a Wednesday or something. And like one of the like church counselors was like, I'm just going to show you guys my favorite movie. And she put this on. And very much like Lomas, one of my first crushes was also the singer of Better (laughs) Off Dead. Yeah. and it was, yeah, it's like that was a rabbit hole when I started going down and like looking her up again. Because it's funny, I tried to look on iTunes for that song. So again, like as we've been communicating with each other, I looked and for like an hour a couple of weeks ago uh, on iTunes trying to find the Better Off Dead song and I couldn't find it. I was like, oh, well, just maybe it doesn't exist. And then like a week ago, you're like, hey, on August 1st, yeah, the she Better Off Dead it. song comes on iTunes. Yeah. <laughs> it was that I had it on Spotify because I did the exact same thing after watching that scene. I immediately started trying to find that song. I'm pretty sure I've listened to it on repeat every single day, like on my way to and from work. Cause it's so good. I'm like singing it as I'm doing dishes and like, I'm coming home and making my dinner. And my husband's like, what do you know about EG daily? Oh, you think you're a fan now? <laughs> um, I also want to talk about <laughs> the paper boy and his $2, his $2 cash with his sweet little switchblade comb <laughs> that he uses dude paper boy two dollars cash is like classic 80s era like comedy it's uh-huh. so freaking good uh plus one tip. of my life this has been such a fun week for me because my wife has not seen better off dead or one crazy summer so we oh. did like a two for this week where she got to watch Better Off Dead first and then One Crazy Summer, both by Savage Steve Holland as yes. the director. Um, and the $2 thing has been like an ongoing joke like all week. She just slips it in because she thought it was the funniest bit from like any movie she's ever seen. So like I'll come home and she like, I'll be like taking the dog out for a walk and she'll just like, yell over the fence she'd be like i want my two (laughs) dollars it's been so much fun like getting she absolutely adored better off dead she was on one crazy summer but yeah she loved loved better off dead and yeah she too now has a crush on young cusack but yeah the two dollar thing is i think gonna be like a new ongoing tradition for us i love it i'm just gonna randomly tweet it and message it to you guys as well now like i feel like it's just we're like the two dollar gang and i love it i'm coining it like that's what's happening anytime anytime both of you are back on the show that's what i'm saying i'm not even using your names anymore we're here with the two dollar gang because that's (laughs) please (laughs) it's canon now um so yeah so then when we were talking about doing this lomas you messaged and said how One Quite Crazy Summer was on Stars and calling it the unofficial sequel to Better Off Dead, which is how we ended up with this with this double feature. So why don't you give the little explanation on, on how these connect in that way? They're the same director and a majority of the cast is saying like, yeah. it's John Cusack, it's Curtis Armstrong, it's the same director. There's also like the same little weird animation breaks throughout the yeah. the movie. And there are just like a lot of like weird connections that you see throughout the films that like draw them together. And I don't really know like why, but like growing up, I always assumed they were in like this weird parallel universe together <laughs> because they were so similar. So I've always just thought of them as like a package kind of deal. I can see that. I know, well, Even Cusack's mom in both movies is kind of the same character. <laughs> uh, and by the way, Cusack's mom in Better Off Dead is my favorite part of that movie. She's so detached, but like and her it cooking... has raisins in it. You like raisins? <laughs> yeah. 
and it's just this goop that she puts on his plate that starts to like move away. <laughs> and it's like so a, good. Like a complete side note, like Ricky's mom and Better Off Dead, you know, the uh-huh. Ah, She's the crossing yeah. guard in one crazy song. Yes. 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 Um, uh, yeah. I don't think we talk enough about a hero of the 80s that is Curtis Armstrong. No, we do not. Uh, his roles in both <laughs> movies are amazing. One is Akak, and I can't even remember his friend's name in Better Off Dead, but he's Charles like, Dumar. his line where he yeah. says, uh, yes, he says, uh, I've been going to this high school for seven, seven and a half, and half years. years. I'm not an idiot. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> or like when he's up there on top of the mountain with him, like trying to hype him up <laughs> with like this cigarette hanging out of his mouth, doing like his best. Oh, his direction. <laughs> okay. I want you to go down this hill really fast. And if anything gets in your way, turn. Turn. <laughs> He's like, all right, you got it. And he like smacks him and walks away. <laughs> so good. My favorite Charles Demar scenes is one where he's just he's randomly carrying around a pig fetus for like five minutes, <laughs> and the movie never acknowledges it. Yes. He, he's just like walking around with it, looking at it. Or can we talk about the teacher that like just does go like just goes and asks. John Cusack, if he would be okay if he takes out Beth. <laughs> like, well, and then the mailman. Well, so does the mailman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody's after Beth. <laughs> oh my God. It's hilarious. I, I can't get enough. I, I, I can't wait to watch this movie again. Cause it is so, it was so fun. I, there's just so many. Also, how eighties is it? That they all live in Northern California, and the sport that we're trying out for is the ski team. Yeah. Like <laughs> the ski team, it's fine, but <laughs> it's always and then it's like it's it's very snowy and cold when they're doing the skiing, but then the rest of the movie looks really warm because they're in California, and they don't they only ever acknowledge it every now and then that it's Northern California. But all of a sudden, they don't need jackets anymore. But if they're that close to where a mountain is for a ski team, I would assume it's cold all the time. I don't know. I've never been skiing. (laughs) Uh, I've gone skiing one time in my life. Me too. Fell every single time I attempted to ski. Yeah. And then somebody convinced me it would be a good idea to go snowboarding snowboarding after having seen me ski. Uh, (laughs) So then I went snowboarding and tore an ACL while snowboarding. Oh, no. So winter sports are a no-no for the moose, <laughs> which you would think, given the name, right? Big no-no for me. <laughs> big, a big no, thank you. Um, what? I, it's like I keep trying to think of like other moments in this movie that are just so wild. But the entire, or like, we're, well, if we go back to talking about Lane's mom and just in the first scene with the dad, and she gives him the plate of bacon. And he's like, what is this? She's like, it's bacon. But remember, you didn't like the grease from the pan fry, so I boiled it. <laughs> right. I know it's bacon, but what have you done to <laughs> it? What have you yeah. done to it? <laughs> <laughs> or how the bad is <laughs> So good. He, she gifts them for Christmas. She gifts them all TV dinner. A Schwann's TV dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or the scene where she's like cooking dinner, but it's some sort of like a lobster tentacle creature. <laughs> she's got like the cookbook in one hand and she's just spicing it. Yeah. She's like, kicking the creature. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. It's, she's so oblivious to it. I it's love it. Incredible. Or like when he's going to try to go and date other people to make Beth jealous and he talks, he's talking about the one cheerleader. And like she date, she's dating the basketball team, not just one player, but the entire team. <laughs> and now they all just like grunt every time. <laughs> oh. Yeah, none of them speak; they just <laughs> grunt. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys want to hear like a really bizarre, better off dead fact? Absolutely. Of course. This this movie takes place in the same universe as the Porky's trilogy. 
No way. Really? Yes. Like the the restaurant that he works at, the guy that he works for is Mike Mitchell, who is Porky. And if you look, like he's like, Pat the pig, Pat the pig. Like everything is pig themed. Uh huh. So this is like this is like Porky after his restaurant is destroyed in Florida. Oh my god. That's funny. I would not have. So he's relocated to California. <laughs> yeah, so this is all oh happening. God, if there was the anyone years. on this planet. Brother Lovis, if there is anybody on this planet that would know that, it would be you, my friend. <laughs> I'm so I'm glad telling you, you, you can look this up. <laughs> um, That's why he has to wear a pig hat. <laughs> that pig hat is amazing. It's incredible. Uh, can we also talk about the <laughs> Yi Suk Ri and Chen Ri and how one of them doesn't speak English and so he doesn't speak and the other one learned English from ESPN so he only sounds like Howard Cosell <laughs> every time he talks. <laughs> A once great champion. <laughs> And I love that, like, <laughs> that John Cusack goes on a whole, like, little bit of a monologue with it. It's like, what's worse, not being able to speak English at all or only sound speaking like Howard Cosell? Because that's how he learned. <laughs> oh, my. God. It's so absurd, but in the best way possible. And then you get into. That scene. The scene with those brothers, though, is like totally like that's what makes this movie great is it just happens. Yeah. And then <laughs> Cus Cusack's character like just is immediately prepared for it. Like the one guy starts putting on his racing gloves and Cusack pulls out like the dishwashing gloves <laughs> and puts them on to get ready for his race. Like, this just happens in his life. Like, it's so good. <laughs> like it's just an everyday thing. And the <laughs> Oh, man. And then we get into One Crazy Summer. One of my favorite things about this. So it starts at a graduation because they're all, you know, graduating high school. And then the principal goes, the graduating class of generic New York high school. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was like, that, what a great name for it. Like, fuck it. Like, who cares? Generic. It's fine. <laughs> I think it's, it's subtle, but like, I love it that, you know, he just watches a man die at his high school graduation <laughs> and doesn't even care to tell anybody. Well, the guy like dies in his arms, like yeah. the, the hat comes down and gets him. And then they just like set him down in the chair and leave. Yeah. <laughs> we had to, it's funny. So I told my, I like, I had never noticed that on past viewings. And I told my wife, I was like, oh shit, that guy just died in Cusack's arms so we had to like reverse it and go back and watch that scene again because like we weren't quite prepared for like she's like no I think it just got knocked out I'm like no the thing is sticking out of his back <laughs> yeah it's it's, it's savage steed man that's exactly what that man is it is I love the whole thing too of like both of these movies having a younger sibling in them that don't really talk but are absolutely hilarious or just mess or just come in and just, just fuck shit up. Like squid whenever <laughs> with the crossing guard, when the little girls are making the faces at the dog and she's like, if someone comes and pats you on the back, your face will get stuck like that. And so <laughs> that's exactly what squid does. And then just throughout the movies, <laughs> you see them with their face all stuck. <laughs> <laughs> And it's funny because everyone around them is just horrified by them when yeah. they see them. Yeah. And everyone just starts screaming and so do they. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's so good. It's so good. And I feel like it would. we have to touch base, especially in, I think it's more prominent in One Crazy Summer than Better Off Dead. But Jeremy Piven has a receding hairline and he's supposed to be playing like an 18-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, like, all of these very, very much late 20s to probably early 30s individuals that just graduated high school. Like, my favorite genre of, I was telling them, my favorite genre of 80s movies are 
very clearly adults playing somewhat recent, either current or graduated high school students. Like uh, the guy that played Teddy and the guy from uh, Animal House that plays his dad. Yeah. They're pretty much the same age in real life. <laughs> and they, the, One's like just a little more run down than the other. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I'm, I'm so glad neither one of you gave me the heads up about um, Bobcat being in this movie. Uh. <laughs> because that was a little treat, getting Bobcat being Bobcat all over the place and just randomly yelling in people's faces. Like, <laughs> that's like vintage Bobcat Goldwing. Oh, right there. yeah. Uh, yeah, just early Bobcat, just nothing but like high, high pitched squealing and screaming the whole time. And it works in the movie, it works for the character, too. Like, because he, when he's, when he's just talking regularly, like when he offers he, uh, to pose for, um, to pose so, uh, draw him. And then Hoops is like, no, I'm good. And he's like talking subtly. Yeah, he's like, oh, I offered you my money, but you can but <laughs> It's funny. And then a moment later, he's doing his like loud screaming and squealing again. Yeah. <laughs> can we also, I also love the scene where they're at Grandma Calamari's house. And <laughs> she's made them all dinner and she's offering more. And does anyone want anything? Everyone says no. And then she drops the check <laughs> for everyone. <Yes. laughs> Or the fact that or they're... when he, uh, uh, George is telling Akak, he says, uh, he says, well, Akak, he goes, you can come stay at my grandma's house. He says, she's got really affordable rates. <laughs> <laughs> and right. I think one of the, the unsung heroes in all of 80s movies is Uncle Frank. I love that yes. character. Yes. Just sitting there with like a jar of amphetamine, slowly losing his mind in a comedy. That makes me so happy. And I can't really explain why. <laughs> leave me alone. Just my waiting for that you. tone. He's <laughs> waiting to go. And then he finally gets to call and he pulls the cord out from <laughs> the wall. Oh, I am one. I mean, do I wish I had experiences much sooner so I could talk with people about them and throw random lines out and think they were hilarious? Yes. But am I glad that I got to discover them with two of my favorite people that love this movie and appreciate it for what it is? Even more yes. Like, (laughs) thank God for podcasts and movie friends. Because I would never know that this type of glorious film even existed. And uh, Savage Steve Holland did quite a bunch of, of, he did a lot, it looks like he did a lot of TV movies, but like these, his first one was Better Off Dead. And then, or no, let me see. I want to see what his filmography is because I love his shit and now I want to go and watch all of it. He has another one that's very similar in the vein of these two called How I Got Into College. Yes. Which that... I also highly recommend. Okay. That one, I think, it looks like that one came out after uh, this last one. Um, uh, uh, one Crazy Summer. Also, mm-hmm. the real set of the, a nice, a nice, Demi Moore does not, have, does not look like she's aged a day over this movie. No, and uh, this is one of the few movies that I personally find Demi more likable. <laughs> <laughs> You're not not a fan of a, a, a Demi Moore in A Few Good Men? No, she's a fine actress. She just always has like a, an aura of evil, you know? <laughs> in this I one, you're really rooting for her. What's that? I said, in this one, you're really rooting for her. I was going to say, yeah, she comes in at 18 years old sounding like she smokes two packs a day. (laughs) (laughs) Like, yeah, I agree. I know there's always been something off about Demi Moore, too, for me. Uh, It's weird that you have that same opinion as I do, Lomas. Uh, She is a great actress, but there's always been, like, something off. Like, maybe you and I both have that, like, 
twins, and there's just something uh, evil about them. <laughs> so I'm many. sure there's not. I'm sure she's lovely. Please tune into the show to me. Do the follow <laughs> on One Crazy know. Summer with Cusack. <laughs> Let us know your thoughts in the comments, to me. Make sure you've subscribed, rate, and review. <laughs> for... I don't know. She just seems like the, the kind of person that like will slowly poison her boyfriend to get sympathy for him being sick. <laughs> you think and... the Phantom Thread was based off of her? Is that... <laughs> oh, I've never seen Phantom Thread, but I think that's why Ashton Kutcher aged so poorly. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, no, Phantom Thread is one of the few Paul Thomas Anderson movies that I've actually seen. Um, and, like, that is pretty much what that is. I mean, no, like, big spoiler. It's also Paul Thomas Anderson. So if you have, like, 17 hours, go ahead and watch it. But if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but also don't. Um, okay, so. Getting back into Better Off Dead, I need, much like we did with the Burbs, I need top three favorite moments from Better mm. Off Dead. Top three favorite moments. Um, definitely the, for, I'll go first if you don't mind. For, for me, first off, like the school dance, because mm -hmm. there are a couple of moments in there. One, like my early childhood, one of my first ever crushes. But two, Ricky unleashes perhaps the greatest dance scene in the history of film. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it doesn't, it doesn't get any of that. Like in the eighties around that time, if you grew up, there were all these movies that would be on like HBO during the day that like centered around dance. Uh -huh. And they would always have like these epic dance battles or dance scenes. And this was like, if you were a fat kid that knew they would never dance, this was your moment. This this was what brought it all home. And I would say, up there, like that's way up there. And then, um, I think number two moment for me is when uh, they're on top of the mountain, right before the scene you're talking about, where he's like amping him up. He's sitting there snorting the mountain. <laughs> and he's like, this is 100 percent pure snow. Yeah. <laughs> you know what the street value of this mountain is? I can't move my left arm or right arm. Then he's just sitting there whirling his arm around. <laughs> There's just so many incongruencies about that scene. I could be at home drinking this monster eggnog. My brother makes out a lighter fluid. <laughs> And those are just all subtle lines like I've used in work settings before without ever explaining them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know the street value of this mountain right now? <laughs> oh. and, and then I think uh, the third one is when John Cusick first tries to hang himself and he's getting ready to hang himself and he goes, wait a minute, I've not been anywhere. And then his mom knocks him off. Like, seriously, I spent like 20 years working in suicide prevention, and I'm pretty sure that scene is what sent me down that path. <laughs> yes, I love the origin story. <laughs> what a great origin story. That's amazing. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, those... <laughs> Do you, and then how he's even before he's snorting the mountain, you see you see him snorting his jello and then he offers <laughs> <laughs> He offers it to like to the French exchange student and she's like mm, I'm okay. <laughs> no thank you. I can't even get real drugs here. That's how small this town is. <laughs> Oh, uh, what about you, Moose? Where, what, what are your, what, where do your top three land? So anything that has to do with with his mom, for sure. Uh, I, I think that that's just she's just so oblivious. Uh, like even when uh, when Ricky Butler's mom is drinking the like lighter fluid, <laughs> and she compliments her, she's like, uh, "Oh gosh," she's like, "This liqueur is great." And uh, the mom is just like, oh, okay, well, thank you, yes. Like, she's so <laughs> oblivious. Like, there's no liqueur on the she, table, but she's drinking it, so she just accepts the compliment. And then like, she, so 
out of touch. It's, it's amazing. She goes to smoke the cigarette. Lane's like, no. <laughs> and then he's like apologizing to Ricky in the next scene. Like, sorry, I blew up your mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think any, I think any scene with Ricky Butler in it is amazing. Uh, Cause he, whoever's playing Ricky Butler has these little looks that he gives. Ricky Butler is Dan, uh, Dan, Sh- no, that's yeah, or Ricky Smith or, but yeah, he's Dan Schneider, right? Yes. Who ended up like, his little looks are amazing. <laughs> and then at the end when like he meets the nerd girl, yes! and, like he just looks at the camera and kind of shrugs like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and then what, like leaves his mom there. Yeah. Ricky Butler is definitely making it the top three for me for sure. I told you to meet then, in front of the school. It's like, mother wouldn't want us to be late. And he's like, I'm going to tell mother you're speeding. Like, and it's, yeah. the character of Ricky Butler is the best. Uh, and then the, I'm sorry. I know it's, I know it's incredibly dated, but the $2 thing just works for me. Oh, the $2 like, thing that, is amazing. Like whole little, the whole little shtick with the $2 is so funny. You've got the little tough kid with his little switchblade comb. <laughs> you know, which is funny because when I was a kid, I had a friggin' switch to make code. Of course. Of course. Uh, um, and then just how it progresses. Like, he's walking through the park, and all of a sudden, he just, like, you just see the shadow <laughs> kind of go by in the fog. And then it's just like a horror scene. He's, like, jumping, and then he's like, oh, my God! And he's jumping into the-, the car. He's, like, struggling with starting it as, like, the little kids are coming after him for the $2. <laughs> it's, like, the dad wakes up. Like he hears the, the sound of the of the baseball court against the bike spokes, yeah. and the dad wakes up, and he's just like in this cold sweat because the kid comes by, and every morning breaks one of his windows in his yeah. garage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the whole paper boy shtick absolutely works for me. It's amazing. It's yeah, though that's a. Uh, I would say definitely the two dollars is, is in there for sure. Um, Honestly, my some of my favorite moments are like the racing moments with the with the two with the two brothers, the, the one that sounds like Howard Cosell and the one that can't speak English. I think are just uh, those scenes just absolutely kill me. Like they had me rolling the entire time. Um, and then the, the scene where when they do the flashback where he's meeting Beth for the first time and he catches the football. And he doesn't, you don't realize that first, but he's just like standing in those people's picnic. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then, like, goes and sits down, and like, she just like scratches her nose, and all of a sudden they go into like this battle of like wiping their faces because like they don't know if the other one is <laughs> telling them they have something on their face. That whole part just, just cracks me up. Um, I also thought it was when, when, when uh, Diane Franklin's character, Monique, finally started speaking English and to Lane, and he was like, whoa, like she went this whole movie this whole time. And then like it really speeds up fast where like not only can she speak English, but she can also fix cars. And so she's fixing up that hunk of junk that's just sitting on the front lawn. Okay, so in both Better Off Dead and in One Crazy Summer, it's funny. I was telling my wife, I was like, every time they came up, I said, oh, here it comes. Here comes the 80s montage fix-up fix up scene yes. where they're playing, like, whatever 80s song was popular that year. And they fix, like, this horribly broken car or this boat that will never sail. And they fix it in, like, seven minutes. And it's like, ready to go. Like, put in a new engine into the car? Like, just... Right. <laughs> And all of a sudden, he rolls out like it's a hunk of shit in the driveway before. Yeah. And he rolls out with like the hottest Camaro you've ever seen. Or the boat from yeah. One Crazy Summer, where again, one afternoon of a little bit of paint and hard work, and all of a sudden, bam, the boat is in perfect sailing order. Like, and the yeah. engine of Homie's car, like, they, they like, <laughs> Where they're 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 blowing the hatch and then it's the engine of what's his face's car. Teddy's car. <laughs> Teddy's car. <laughs> also the other sport featured heavily in the eighties. Yachting. <laughs> Yachting. <laughs> Absolutely. The Absolutely. It makes total sense. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh. No, so I think kind of getting into more, getting more into, um, one crazy summer because we have to, uh, the whole, <laughs> the whole idea of this whole regatta that's going on with it, um, <laughs> That whole scene is probably in my top for uh, favorite moments where, like, just Teddy throwing a temper tantrum because his dad can't leave, like, keeps trying to cheat so that they can win. And then Squid comes up in the, <laughs> in the shark. In the giant Daddy rabbit dolphin. dolphin. With the rabies. The rabbit dolphin. Yep. That's because it's foam. It's not, it's not a shark. It's a giant dolphin. <laughs> Oh, it's just, it's perfect. It is so perfect. Uh, what about, what about you, Moose? What, what would you say top, top three moments with, with one crazy summer? Uh, where Uncle Frank takes Ax, 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 uh, bazooka and blows up the radio station. Because <laughs> <laughs> at the end, and then you see the Stork twins, like, are like, oh, there's a bonfire. And they come running, yeah. like, it's kind of a perfect <laughs> send-off for that draws. movie. Uh, Uncle Frank gets his revenge, but then, you know, you see the Stork Twins in action. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the regatta scene for sure. Uh, and then the when you first see Akak, and they're like, oh, he's on the beach collecting shells. And they're like, oh, that's nice. But he's collecting, like, military shells. Yeah. And he's in a bombing zone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, last one. I, I got to mention this one, too. Uh, whenever George is being sat on... <laughs> yeah. First, he's buried up to the sand, and the one guy just sits down and he's playing, you know, Creed's Clearwater on his headphones, and he's sitting down. And of all things, he pulls out to eat. He pulls out like beans. <laughs> beans. He's like, no, no. George, <laughs> go running after George. Yeah, it's. And the two EMT guys are sitting there fighting over who's going to give him who's going to give him mouth to mouth. <laughs> What about you, Lobus? What would you what What are your What are your key top moments with uh, one crazy summer? I would say the first one is one of the early animation where he's talking about the cute and fuzzy bunnies, <laughs> and then the rhino pulls out the submachine gun and just starts blasting the rabbits. Like yeah. once I saw like cute and fuzzy bunnies being mowed down, like as a kid, like I knew this was a movie that would belong to me. I knew. <laughs> This was stuff worth it, I think, you know? So I would say that is up there. Yeah. And then with a tough one, there's only like little moments that I like. I want to say that when um, Squids rolls up the window on the two gas station attendants and the grandmother just <laughs> bolts out, dragging them along the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is and taking too looking, long. <laughs> and for further connections, I'm pretty sure one of the gas station attendants is the mailman that Badger gets the book from. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, he was. Yep, yep, yep. And then this is a very subtle moment, and, like, no one ever, like, talks about it. But for me, this is, like, a – I love, like, layered comedy that you don't pick up the first time, but – like when they're walking out of graduation and George is like, you know, your parents aren't going to think you're going to be a street, street sleeper, street sweeper your entire life. Just like my mom knows I'm not an irresponsible louse. And then he stands up and he still has last year's Christmas trees strapped to the back yeah. of his car <laughs> that he never threw away. <laughs> and his car is filthy. Yeah, it's just like small things like that. I just I, they always make me happy. <laughs> I don't yeah. know why. Those little well, it's like even in in Better Off Dead when um the dad's trying to pour cereal and all of the um the backs of like all these boxes or like sides of them are all cut out because Badger's collecting the coupons and so everything's spilling out and then it plays into when uh Lane is asked to feed the cat and it's the same thing. It's just cat yes. food just spilling. <laughs> across the floor <laughs> because it's, there's no back on the box. And then I thought about the burbs because right after he feeds the cat, he goes and pours himself a bowl of yes. cat food. <laughs> of cat food, yes. <laughs> this, but also, um, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say there's like 
And the same thing, like every time I watch one of these movies, like I find like a little subtle thing like that. When I watched Better Off Dead, even this time, I found like a joke that I had never seen. And the thousands of times that I had watched this, when they are getting ready to crash, you know, when they're racing with the brothers and they end up in the pit, they uh -huh. drive through like a, a bunch of nuns. <laughs> and I don't know if you noticed it, but the nuns are all wearing sunglasses and one of them is holding a boom box. Yeah. <laughs> I've never, ever noticed that before. <laughs> Oh, that's the amazing. little like random like jokes that they put in these. Like, cause it, that's so random that the nuns would be walking across the intersection wearing sunglasses and like one of them's holding a boom yeah. box. Like, what the hell is that? But it's, it exists, <laughs> and it's why, amazing. Why? It's like, just why not? Um, do you, I mean, I, I assume you guys, so we know about the first time you guys saw Better Off Dead. What about One Crazy Summer? Was it like right around the same time or or did, did you come into those one that one later? I know that I saw... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Miss. Oh, no. Go ahead, buddy. I saw <laughs> One Crazy Summer. I It was, I believe, a couple years after it because when I stumbled like on One Crazy Summer, I was like, this is like Better Off Dead Part 2. And it like blew my mind because I didn't know it existed. <laughs> And so, like, for, like, three weeks, that's all I did was watch One Crazy Summer because Better Off Dead was, like, one of my top, top childhood movies. And so finding out it had, a like, a sequel that lived up to it just totally blew my mind. Uh, I couldn't tell you the exact day, but it was probably a year or two later. That's so funny. One of my dad's, like, favorite movies is Summer Catch. Or, excuse me, Summer Rental with uh, John Candy. Oh, yeah. And there, uh -huh. there, too, is a sailing scene in that movie. And so we were at Blockbuster one time and had come across uh, One Crazy Summer. And my dad was like, oh, he's like, it's kind of like Summer Rental. So he grabbed me. And I, I don't know which one I saw first. I actually feel like I maybe saw Summer uh <laughs> One Crazy Summer before Better Off Dead. Because I remember I was I was probably like 11 or 12 when I saw Better Off Dead for the first time. But I had like seen, and it, when we were kids, like we didn't really have anything but basic cable. And so if we rented a movie for Blockbuster, we watched it like three or four times in the 24 hours before yeah. we returned it. So we watched, oh, for sure. yeah, we watched One Crazy Summer like five times before we took it back the next day. Um, so I definitely think I've seen uh, One Crazy Summer first, uh, but the more impactful of the two was definitely Better Off Dead. And then I never kind of assumed that they're in the same universe until you dropped that like line in our DMs, Lomas. And then when I watched them both this week, I'm like, oh my God, this is like really the sequel to Better Off Dead. It really is. I, see. I also love that... As they're graduating, because uh, he's uh, John John Cusack, a, a character in Better Off Dead Hoops, is g trying to get into design school, and he has to make that cartoon because he disappointed his parents by not getting a basketball scholarship. But like, he very clearly was not any good <laughs> at basketball whatsoever. And then his graduation present, everyone's getting a new car, and they gave him like a tractor. <laughs> oh no, yeah. No, they gave him the street sweeper because that the was street sweeper. Yeah, that's that was, was the joke. Was. Is that you don't think your mom or your mom doesn't think you're going to be a street sweeper, right? And then his gift yeah. from his mom was the street sweeper. <laughs> As everyone, he's like Nantucket. <laughs> like yeah, Nantucket. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you. One of the subtle jokes in One Crazy Summer is anytime you look at a trash can around John Cusack, there's nothing in it, but everything he's tried to shoot in it. It's all spilled around the trash can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's funny. I did. I I well, I'm gonna have to go back and watch it now, just for just for that right there. Because I remember he keeps like trying to shoot it in, and just get, until the very end when he has to get the little the the one rope back through the the cord the little hole because of uh, Teddy's dad, who uh, cut it down. Little cheater. What an asshole. He got his though. So that's yeah. Okay. Again, one thing about 80s movies, he, he, and the reason he got his in the end was because he fucked with the dog. He went and he kicked the dog. He tried to kick Bosco you, in the face. 
Mm. How dare. And look what happened to him. He got eaten by foam. <laughs> the most wild concept I've ever seen. I love it. I, I loved every minute of both of these movies. Mm. I'm, I'm so glad because <laughs> all the episodes of this podcast leading up to this one, we, that, that have been, <laughs> that'll be, that has been released. This, I am so glad that we now got to this because I need a breather after Zodiac and Psycho and <laughs> the Birds. It's been a heavy few episodes. <laughs> so thank God for you two and helping me expand my 80s comedies horizons. Because I don't know if I ever would have known that either one of these movies existed without you both. A weird fact, though, that if you take um, Savage Holland's next movie, How I Got Into College, mm -hmm. and you stack them up, it's a lot like this where they he uses a lot of the same actors. But Better Off uh -huh. Dead is high school junior year. One Crazy Summer is right after graduation. And then How I Got Into College is the summer trying to get into college after that. So they're like chronologically like all tied together and they use a lot of the same actors in all three of them. Oh, now that, I have to now now yeah, I have to go Armstrong watch in, how I got into how college. I got into college. It's called How I Got into College, but like you know, like Uncle Frank, the guy that's sitting into the room. So yeah. and how I got into college, instead of the end of you know, little animations, there's these little cut scenes where the guy's imagining like his SAT questions as people. And Uncle Frank is all the characters he imagines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, this one has Anthony Edwards in it? Yeah. Hell yeah. It's really is funny. Is Curtis Armstrong in. in this one? Yes, he is. <laughs> nice. I'm in. You got me. You get, got some Richard Jenkins in here. I'm uh, I'm on Phil Philip Baker Hall. I'm sold. I got to watch it now. <laughs> we'll have to return. Another episode. Putting it on the books now. Yeah, it's happening. I, I've not, I've not ever seen that one. I would totally be down to uh, put that in the books. Book it for later. Let's do it. Book it. We're, we're booking it. Um, the other thing I need to mention about both of these movies is the phenomenal soundtracks for both of them. Like perfection. 80s movie soundtrack where it's just banger after banger of good songs. <laughs> The especially like one crazy summer used like a lot of mainstream songs I felt like compared to Better Off Dead. Yeah. yeah. And I think like the the soundtrack for that movie now would cost more than making that movie three times. Oh, absolutely. Sure. <laughs> they, I think they had Van Halen in one crazy summer at one or no, maybe that wasn't which what if is it better off dead with the yeah. animation playing the guitar? Yeah, the, the, David Lee Roth is the hamburger. Yeah, that's yep. right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Just a real quick stop motion hamburger. Oh my god, speaking of that hamburger, when he takes her to eat at the the restaurant and he's like he puts the TV dinner in front of Monique and he was like, That was my Christmas present. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know this is totally out of random order, but uh I will say this. My favorite moment of one Crazy Summer, uh, by far, is when George is, they're about to christen the boat, and he's got, like, the bottle, and he says, uh, <laughs> my parents brought this back from Paris, France for me. And he pulls out a small little shooter of Jose Cuervo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's, and everyone's like, ooh, ah. <laughs> I, like, again, I never caught that on past viewings. And then I turned yeah. to my wife and I was like, I was like, like he could have got that shooter anywhere. Like I love that of all things that his parents brought him back from Paris. It was a little shooter of tequila. <laughs> and then when she goes to Chris in the boat with it, her hand just goes through. He says, Oh and yeah, that... we get we get paid over that. <laughs> we get and then the boat's name is just the boat. The boat. The boat. It's just the boat. It's just it's genius. Um, I'm looking more at like what Savage Steve Holland has done. And it's so funny after these movies, he did like a ton of TV. He did like 
eight episodes of Encyclopedia Brown as a director. He did Even Stevens, episodes of Lizzie McGuire. Didn't he direct so Lizzie McGuire? No. Did he? It was Peter Hyams. Um, no, no, no. The TV show. Oh, what maybe. Am I thinking of? Let's see. Um, God, he did a bunch of stuff. He also was like a voice actor. Was he really? Let's look. He did a lot of like animation voices. Oh shit! He did like he did a bunch of Eek the Cat, or he did. (laughs) He was Elmo. He was Elmo the Elk in Eek the Cat. Oh my god, Ah. that's a title I haven't heard in forever. Right, I used to have a stuffed animal of Eek the Cat, and I loved him so much. It's one of my absolute favorite. Oh, he did Stuck in the Suburbs. That was a fantastic Disney movie. That was back during like the classic like uh, DCOM Disney Disney Channel original movie era. This is why I love doing this because I just get on IMDb and just <laughs> am amazed. It's a rabbit at what... hole. Yeah, it's such a rabbit hole. He did. He definitely like. He clearly did a bunch of like. He obviously stayed in touch with and worked a lot alongside with like Dan Schneider because he did a lot of Zoe 101, um, Ned's Declassified Ads, and he also did a bunch of Disney stuff like Phil of the Future, Lizzie McGuire, that kind of stuff. So he found like a little niche with that, but um, Better Off Dead, probably my most favorite 80s comedy right now of all time because it is wonderful. So with that being said... I'm going to go into letterbox and we're going to rate, do my, do my rating. So I'm going to start off with one crazy summer because while this one was fun, I definitely, it's not my favorite of the two that we watched, but I'd still put it right at four out of five stars. Then, so we got that one and then better off dead. Between the soundtrack and the John Cusack and just the hilarity of it all and the Badger and Lane's mom and all of it, we're going five stars for Better Off Dead. I think that is a very accurate rating for Better Off Dead. I hope I have redeemed myself in your eyes from my Burbs rating. <laughs> no, no, the, the Burbs rating was humiliating both for you and your family. But this one, this <laughs> one was a great rating. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what, can, what can we do? I'm pretty sure I disappointed almost everyone in my life when, when they listened to the Burbs and heard what I rated it. <laughs> yep, that's accurate. <laughs> almost ended a friendship i'm so sorry i'm so glad that i could uh win both of you back and get my place back in the circle again back in the circle of trust you are i would catch you in a trust fall now oh thank you so much you're welcome i would never do a trust fall because I'm, I'm scared <laughs> but i appreciate it okay has anybody been part of a trust fall where you actually did fall Cause I have. No, because I refuse to put myself. <laughs> I have, and I'll never do it again. So, for your exact reason as to why you wouldn't is exactly the reason why. If somebody's like, "Let's do trust fall," it's like, "Fuck you!" Like, <laughs> it's just not gonna Fool happen. Fool me once. Fool me once. Shame on you. <laughs> Fool and it me wasn't twice. Like, shame. Oh, like I, I felt like I caught myself with my arm. No, I like full on committed to the trust fall. Like hit the ground, like head first, like. I shit you not. I thought I had a concussion later. Like, <laughs> will not do a trust ball. So, absolutely, uh, I will not catch you in a trust ball because I don't want anything to do with that. Put you back in the circle of trust, Alex. I love it. I wouldn't catch you because I don't want to play that game. But we're, we can we can all still be friends. That's exactly what I was hoping for. With <laughs> the ending, Although of I'm a little podcast. worried about your guys' level of trust issues. We need to talk about this, <laughs> guys. That's, that's a different podcast. Yeah. <laughs> There's uh, two no nos in my life uh, winter sports, clearly, is a no no, uh, and trust falls. So, as long as we can avoid those, we're good. I trust you guys indefinitely. <laughs> 
<laughs> Everything's gold, and we never have to do those. We'll be good to go. Uh, well, with all that being said, we can we'll we'll start wrapping things up. Uh, Moose, my friend, where can the good people find you again? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Big Moose Haas. Uh, and certainly, thank you again for having Lomas and I on, uh, and certainly talking better off dead. Agreed with your rankings. I mean, one crazy summer is fun. Uh, I'd maybe put it at like a three and a half out of five, but Better Off Dead is the greatest '80s comedy. It's not the greatest '80s movie. There's a there's a certain uh, supernatural comedy that might be the greatest movie ever made that comes out of the '80s. But Better Off Dead is definitely. Oh, the best you're talking 80s about comedy. Big Trouble in Little China, right? Uh, no, that's definitely up <laughs> there. On a, on a side note, the bank manager in One Crazy Summer uh, is Eddie from Big uh, Trouble in Little China. Lomas, while we're waiting for Moose to come back, where can people find you? And, uh, I'm also in Southern Ohio. If you happen to stop by Southern Ohio, you could probably find me with enough effort. I will make sure if I'm ever in Southern Ohio, I will do a search just for that. Uh- <laughs> And if all of you are enjoying what you're hearing, please make sure to subscribe, rate, and review uh, Flick and Reel wherever uh, you, you are listening to us. And if you're listening on YouTube, please make sure you hit subscribe, like, and comment your thoughts on Better Off Dead and One Crazy Summer. And be sure to check out and comment your thoughts on any of the other previous films we've discussed. Uh, and also, please make sure you hit the little bell icon to get notifications for any time we have new content drop here on Flick and Reel. You can follow the show on Twitter at Never Seen at FNR, and you can follow me at Allison Salamone. And until next time, my friends, be safe and let's watch some movies. See ya.